Conversion factors, calculating in chemistry. So we're going to be using these things called conversion factors. Another way to say them is dimensional analysis. Um, but this is the main tool that we're going to be using to do our anything involving ratios in chemistry. So conversion factors are used to convert from one unit to another. So quite often we have some amount of something and we're going to try to convert it to some amount of some other thing. Because again, that's kind of what chemistry is. We start with one thing, we end with another thing. Um, this is how we track the amounts of those things as we go through those reactions. Um, so the first thing to writing these is to write the given quantity. So we always start with something that we know how much we have of. So that is the given quantity. So we're going to be starting with that. The second thing is to write the conversion factor itself. And so this is essentially the ratio that will relate to the thing you have to the thing that you want to have. And I'm gonna get you to write it first with just the units itself. Then you're gonna write the numerical relationship between those two values. You do the calculation, maybe with the help of a calculator, and then you're done. So for example, if you have um, knowledge that a car mostly has four wheels um, and someone asks you, well, how many wheels does 31 cars have? You can probably do that in your head, um, but we'll use this as their example. Let's start with easy stuff and then we'll apply it to some harder things later. So first off, again, write the quantity given. So this is the amount that we have. We want, we're dealing with 31 cars and we want to find out something about those 31 cars. So the conversion factor itself is going to be written like this. We're going to stick to multiplying though it's math you could do dividing and then flip your your ratio there um, but we'll stick to multiplying them and then what we do is we say okay well if we have cars then that is the value that's going to go on the denominator that's the unit that's going on the bottom here so we will write cars on the bottom that's the unit that we want to get rid of so when we multiply this unit of cars by something over units of cars they're going to cancel out that's the point of our conversion factor to take what we have and convert it into something that we do not have. Um, the thing that we're looking for, we want to put its unit on the top. And so we're looking for wheels and we're putting it on top. And as long as you know the relationship between those two quantities, um, then you will be able to do the, the conversion. If you don't know a direct relationship, you can convert to maybe something that you do know and then do it again to get to what you want. So it's not necessarily always one conversion factor that is going to get you to where you want to go. You may have to use more than them. Once you have more than one, uh, once you have these two units written for the conversion, then write the numbers. And I would suggest you do that first because you'll be less likely to make an error if you write the units first and then the numbers, um, you, you may mix them up in the wrong way. If you put the units first, you'll know that the one that you are trying to get rid of is going to cancel out and the one that you're looking for is going to follow through to the answer. So that will give us the unit of wheels and then you can ask your friendly calculator to give you the answer for the actual numerical value. Um, but again, work through with the units first and then do the calculation. You should have the everything written out except for the 124 in this case. Everything else should be written out before you even pick up your calculator. So let's try this out with this question here. So one kilometer has a thousand meters in it. So again, that is the ratio that we know. That's what we're going to be using as our conversion factor. The question is asking how many meters are in 2.8 kilometers. And again, something you could do in your head, but let's set up as a conversion factor for this one. The given value that we are trying to convert from one thing to another, we're going to start by writing that. We are then going to set up our conversion factor. And again, we're multiplying by the ratio. The unit that we have is going to go on the bottom. The unit that we're looking for is going to go on the top. Put those units in first. And again, kilometers are going to cancel out when we do our calculation. The unit we want to end up in is going to be meters. So our answer, meters, will follow through to our answer. Once you have the actual units in, then put the numbers in, then do the calculation. But make sure you do it in that order um, so you, you don't accidentally put the one in the wrong place. So pause the video here, try these five out and see if you can do the conversions for them. And again, the, the point is not to get the answer. We don't actually care what the answer is. The point is to practice the process so that when it gets to more difficult questions, you're able to answer those as well. 
So first one, 0.7 liters, and we want to go to milliliters. So we're taking our 0.7 liters, our given value. We're setting up our conversion factor with liters on the bottom so that they will cancel out. And milliliters will can follow through to our answer here. Um, and again, we can, in fact, we have to put this in scientific notation because if you look at the significant sig digs on our measure value of 0.7, it's only one sig dig. So we have to answer here because we can't we can't put 700 milliliters because um, that's more precise than we actually know. So we have to put this down to one significant digits, but putting that into scientific notation allows us to do that. Now we could change the units, but the question is asking for us in milliliters. 1.5 hours into minutes. So again, our given value is 1.5. We set up our conversion factor with hours on the bottom, the thing we want on top, and we do the calculation, we end up with our 90 minutes. 182.25 days um, into years, and see again, days is gonna go on the bottom, and we happen to know that there's 365.25 days in a year, and therefore days are gonna cancel out, and we'll get our answer in years, just under five years here. And again, four sig digs, in our, in our value here, so we want to put our answer in four sig digs as well. Nickels into dollars, so we've got 40 nickels. We're going to put nickels on the bottom and dollars on top. We know there's 20 nickels in the dollar. Nickels cancel out, and that gives us our answer in dollars. And again, two sig digs following through in the measured value, and therefore we get 2.0 dollars. This one involves, or, or can involve anyways, um, if you know the ratios maybe more simply, but as two separate conversions. So for example, years to hours, um, you might know how many years are an hour, but you probably know how many hours are in a day and how many days are in a year. So what we can do is we can break this down into two steps for the conversion. And so we can start with years and we can cancel that out and get to days, but that's, that's not what the question's asking for. So what we're gonna have to do, that will give us our answer in days, but then we want to convert days to hours. We know that a day has 24 hours, so we can do a second conversion here. And again, days is on the bottom of our conversion factor, hours is on the top, so that our answer will be in hours. So we've set that up as two conversion factors. Though realize that we've written this answer here um, of 3,060 days, um, We've written it here and then we've rewritten it there. It'd be better not to have to write out the answer and then write it again, because anytime you write something down, you might write it down wrong. So what we could do is we could just take this conversion factor here and put it up at the top here. And so what that would look like is that, oh, there, there's the answer in scientific notation. Um, but we could put it all in one go here um, where we have the years and we put both conversion factors one after the other. What will happen is the years will cancel out the days will then at that point be at days, but then the days will cancel out and hours will follow through to our answer here. And we want to put that into, again, it is in hours, so we're going to put that inside of notation so we don't have a giant big answer to write. And again, we only have three sig digs of precision, so we have to put it in scientific notation to have those three sig digs of precision in our answer as well.